Fight. Let's all stand together right now. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We glorify you tonight, Lord. We magnify your holy, righteous name. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God, and we adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Isn't it great to be in the presence of the Lord? Isn't it great to be in the presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. And uh, I would, first of all, like to thank God for this opportunity. I was talking to my son on the phone right before I came to church. He pastors in Columbus, Ohio. And I was telling him, I don't know what an old man like me is doing in a meeting like this. Hallelujah. But uh, thank you so very much uh, to the ABI president, uh, Brother Grant. And I appreciate him so very much. We're praying for him and his family. Also, Brother Reese and Brother Gillett, may God bless you. Thank you so very much for the invitation to be here. Appreciate the great job you are doing. Appreciate it so very much. Hallelujah. Also, to our district superintendent, Brother Lichtel, God bless you. Good to see you. Great to be with him. Hallelujah. Preached a great message today. And uh, I have the honor of serving on the general board with him. And I appreciate him so very much, and uh, may God bless him. Also, it's great to be with uh, Brother Nigel. Hallelujah, Brother Nigel Ali. God bless you, Brother Nigel. Appreciate you so very much. And uh, uh, I met him in Fiji. I think it was 2005 or six. He knows the date better than I do. I don't remember. But I do remember there. And when I was in Fiji, I preached in their national dress. Hallelujah. I literally dress. Hallelujah. And uh, I'll never do it again, praise God. But I did want to be Fijian for one time at least. And uh, Brother Brown, God bless you and your family. Love you so much. What a great honor it was to be with you and uh, preach in South Dakota. Praise God. Also, Brother Brooks, I don't, where Brother Brooks, he preached today. It's a great honor. Uh, appreciate them. May God richly bless each and every one of you. The presence of God is here. Forgive me for the protocol of mentioning everybody's names, but I want to make sure that I do give honor. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Praise God. Tomorrow I leave for Monroe, Louisiana. How many of you would like to send greetings to Monroe, Louisiana? Amen. Amen. Monday I go to San Francisco. Would you like to send greetings to San Francisco? Amen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Wednesday, I go to San Antonio, Texas. Would you like to send greetings to San Antonio, Texas? Then I go to, then I go to uh, St. Louis. Hallelujah. And then I go to Japan. And then I go to Romania. Then I go to Norway. Then I go to uh, Ukraine. Hallelujah. And uh, God is pouring out His Spirit all over the world. All over the world. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope I don't mess this up beautiful. I don't know who did this, but isn't that great? I wish I could buy it and take it back to headquarters and uh, put it there. Beautiful job. May God richly bless you. Thank you so very much for everything that you have done on your seats. Many of you found some literature about next steps and other things for global missions. If you're interested in any of that, there's literature. Uh, the brochure on I feel God has called me to be a missionary now. What? That is short-term opportunities, and we're working on that brochure, but I'd like to say that literature's there. Next steps will be in Guam this year. Next year, it's, uh, I don't, where is it going to be next year? Hallelujah, I can't remember. Next year, it's going to be in Costa Rica. ¿Cuánto dicen gloria a Dios? Bueno, ¿cuántos pueden hablar español aquí esta noche? Levante la mano. Levante la mano si usted entiende lo que estoy diciendo. Bueno, hay un buen grupo aquí. A su nombre. Amén. Y a su iglesia. Y al diablo. Derrota. Amén. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know what the rest of you are going to do when you get to heaven. Because we say the angels speak Spanish. Hallelujah. But uh, may God richly bless you. And uh, please look at that literature. Would you help me preach tonight? Would you help me preach for just a few moments? God bless you. It is a great honor to be in such a beautiful congregation. What a beautiful, handsome group of young people or students that are here tonight. May God richly bless you. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. I feel the Holy Ghost. Would you raise your hands and ask God to touch you? 
Would you ask God to open your heart to receive the word of the Lord? Lord Jesus, I come into your presence tonight and I pray for every heart that is here. I pray for every individual. I pray, God, that you will reach out and that you will pour out your spirit upon every heart. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing that I felt today in prayer and yet today as you revealed to me what to preach. I pray right now, God, that you would reach out and that you would bless. I thank you for that same anointing that I felt in my hotel room in prayer this morning over this message. I feel it again right now. And I ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Would you open your heart? Would you tell God, touch me? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, and it will be on the screen in Mark chapter 4, reading verses 35 through 41. Please stay with me for the entire message. I know as I begin to maybe even give the title about what I'm going to preach on, you may wonder, but I know it is God's will for me to preach this message tonight. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Aren't you glad to be part of a church that baptizes in Jesus' name? Are you glad to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. What an awesome time, and thank you once again for allowing me to be part of this. It's a great honor to be here. In Mark chapter 4, beginning with 30, verse 35, In the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, him even as he was in the ship, and there were also other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him. And they say unto him, please note very closely, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I want you to notice the question that they asked the Lord. Master, carest thou not that we perish? And in other words, I want to use that phrase as a title of my message, and I really just want to preach, and I'll read a little more. Does God really care? Does God really care? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Once again, in verse number 38, I want to take that phrase and preach for just a few moments on this question, Does God really care? Does God really care? Lord Jesus, I come into your presence now, and I thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. And I ask you tonight, God, that you would bless each and every one of us. I pray, God, that you would allow me to preach what you have given me to preach and that you will touch the heart of everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Touch our hearts, and may we leave this place tonight with a new determination in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said amen. And everybody said amen. Before you're seated, take somebody's hand and ask them the question, do you really think God cares? And you may be seated. This week, my wife and I returned from El Salvador, where I was privileged to spend probably, I guess it was about eight days that I was privileged to go back home, because I do consider El Salvador home. That is where I was appointed when I was 25. I raised my children there, and I thank God for the country of El Salvador. However, in the years that I lived in El Salvador, Brother Poe, it's good to see you, and, and Brother Griffith, it's good to see you as well. I, I spent a lot of years there in a civil war. I spent time there where I know what it's like to put my children in what I called gun drills, where they would have to get on the floorboard of the car because there would be gunfights as we were driving down the roads, and I would make them get on the floor. Sometimes it was a drill. Other times it was a real situation. 
Uh, I, I remember, in fact, this morning as I was talking to some of the students, I shared some of the great things that God did in our life there. But I would like to say that there were moments when I lived in El Salvador that the question came to my mind, does God really care and does God really know where I am? I, I remember the time that we were in the house and the fighting was going on outside and I looked out the window and I saw the jet fighters flying straight up and then coming back down and shooting and they were shooting into the neighborhood where we live. My daughter Amy, who was, she and her husband were just appointed to Latvia just a few days ago as missionaries. She was sitting in the corner of her bedroom and 15 minutes before I called her out into the living room to pray, I remember that 15 minutes after that a bullet came through the ceiling and went into the very corner where she was sitting and I still have the bullet that came into the roof of the house and in those moments as my daughters when the missile came through the wall of the house brother Nigel I'll never forget when my daughters were up under the cabinets because it was concrete and I was trying to protect them when the missile came through the wall of the house I'll never forget it as my two daughters cried out Daddy, are we going to die? At that moment, I did not know. But I said, girls, everything is going to be all right. Because you know what? There are moments in our lives that when we go through situations like that, we say, does God really know where I am? Does God really care? Now, I know that this message is probably not maybe what you expected, but I'm in the Holy Ghost tonight preaching this. I want you to know I feel in the Holy Ghost that I'm preaching to somebody here tonight that is going through a situation, and you are wondering, does God really know where I am? Does God really understand what's going on? And give me a few moments to preach about that tonight. Because, you see, that was the question that was on the minds and the lips of the disciples that day when they were in the midst of the storm. It's also the question, does God really care for me, the mother who holds the baby uh, that has just died? Are the children that are gathered around the bedside of a parent that has passed away and they do not understand what is going on? It's the question that's on the mind of the man that tonight, maybe in Minneapolis or St. Paul, is out trying to scrape up enough money to be able to feed his family. Does God really care about me? Does God really know where I am? It may be the question on the mind and on the lips of the young man that is on the, in the subway where there seemingly is nobody that cares and they are alone. It's the question on the mind of the lady that is facing a situation in her home that she doesn't understand. Does God really care about me? And does God really know where I am? It's the young people in a society that is so confused and has lost its way. It's the question on the mind of a child that has just heard their father beat their mother and then comes out and tells him, uh, the children, that he loves them and they don't understand. I want you to know it's the question on our minds sometimes. Does God really care about us? Would you raise your hands and talk to the Lord for a moment right now? We love you, Jesus. We worship you you, God. We adore you, Savior, and we magnify you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As I travel around the world and as I go through the airport in Bangkok, Thailand, as I go through the airport in Dubai, as I go through London Heathrow, or as I will fly into Japan in just a week from uh, two weeks from yesterday, I will fly and I will be going to Japan, as I go through the Tokyo airport, I will see the faces of people that are facing situations and the question that is on their mind, does God really know where I am? Does God really care? Hallelujah. And while I know we have the Holy Ghost and while I know that we are filled with his presence and I have seen you worship God, there are times, Brother Lichtel, even in our minds that we wonder, does God really know where I am? Does God really understand what I'm going through? But I've come tonight with a message. I said I've come tonight with a message. 
Does God really know where I am? And does God really care? Now, maybe there's somebody here tonight and you say, you know what? I've got it all together and everything is okay. But I've come to preach to you tonight. God is speaking to someone here tonight. Does God really care? Maybe the question that's on your mind. Because you see, that was the question that was on the mind of the disciples, as I already mentioned, as they were in the storm. Jesus had just taught on the grain of mustard seed. And he said, let us go to the other side. Jesus was in one of the many boats that took them to the other side. Jesus was one boat. There were other boats. We only have the story of the boat that Jesus was in. And in that boat where Jesus was, they asked the question, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I want you to know tonight if in the boat that Jesus was in had the question. How did they feel in the boats that Jesus was not even in the boat? What did they feel when Jesus was not even in that boat? They were wondering, does God really care about us? Does he know where we are? And then in the boat where he was, they saw him asleep and seemingly did not know what was going on. The lightning was flashing. The rain was beating on their face. They did not understand when they heard the crash of the thunder why it didn't wake him up for him at least to respond. But there was no response and he continued to sleep and then they awoke him and this was on the question that was on his mind how are their mind Master, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus, do you really know where I am tonight? Lord, do you know where we are tonight? Do you understand what's going on? Hallelujah. Brother Brown, I've been with you, and I know there's been rough times. As I preach for you, I want you to know it was a great honor for me to be with you. No, yes, of course. I mean, I preached in other churches. I preached to thousands. I guess I preached to congregations of many thousands many times, but I want you to know I was so honored to be with you, but if both of you would be honest with me tonight, you would say there have been moments that you wondered, God, do you really know where I am? Do you really understand what's going on? Hallelujah. But I want you to know that was the question that was on the mind of so many in the Bible. There are stories that we could go to where we find out the lady that had an issue of blood. The Bible says that she began to fight her way through the crowd. Hallelujah. But she had on her mind, does God really care? In that same scenario, Jairus came to Jesus in the same scenario. He was wanted a healing for his daughter, and Jesus did not have time seemingly. And while he wanted to talk to the master, the messenger came and told him, your daughter has died. There's no need in bothering the Lord. There's no need in bothering the Lord. Has anybody ever felt that way? Is it all right? I'm not being sacrilegious. Follow me. Has anybody ever felt, God, do you know where I am? Anybody ever felt that way? Anybody? Can you raise your hand and say, God, do, do, you know, and there's moments we don't understand. The, I'm sorry. I've been in the church 48 years. I've preached thousands of messages. But still there are times that we may wonder, does God really care? Does he really care? Look at your neighbor and ask them a question, does God care? You all are being very quiet. You're listening to me. Hallelujah. And that's fine. Does God really care? But that's what Jairus felt. But I want you to know, hallelujah, as does God really care? But I want you to know the master stopped. I said the master stopped. And when the master stopped, he said it's going to be okay. And the little girl was raised from the dead. Ask him if Jesus cared. I said, ask him if Jesus cared. Hallelujah. Ask Jairus if Jesus cared when he went to the house and raised the little girl from the dead. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I've come to tell you tonight, hallelujah, God does care. I said, God does care. Okay, you don't have to be so tense right now. Hallelujah. If you didn't know where I was going, hallelujah. I said God does care. I said God does care. I said God knows exactly where you are. 
Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Would you listen to me tonight? When you don't do everything right, God still loves you and cares about you. Did you hear what I said? When you make a mistake, God still loves you and cares for you. Hallelujah, I've come to preach to you tonight. Does God really care? On the count of three, I want all of you to ask me, does God really care? One, two, three. I can hear you. One, two, three. Does God really care? Oh, yes, God cares. I said, oh, yes, God cares. I said, God cares. Hallelujah. When things may not be going good, would you listen to me? God never gets in a hurry, but he's always on time. I said, God never gets in a hurry, but he's always on time. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I've come tonight to St. Paul to rejoice in the Holy Ghost. I've come tonight to dance in the Holy Ghost and tell you, God does care. I said, God does care. But listen to me. There were moments, look at me, there were moments when I was 13, 14, and 15 after I got in the church that I had to sleep in the car at night to stay out of the reach of my drunken stepfather. And my mother punished me by not allowing me to go to church. But you know what? God cared. Because after facing all that, I'd go to church in Heron, Illinois, and I sat on the front row. I said I sat on the front row, and you know what I did? It was a staid church. It was an old church. But you know what? Some of the old folks would look down their nose at me like that. But you know what I did? I said, look down your nose all you want to, but I've come to magnify the name of Jesus. I've come to glorify the name of the Lord because you know what? God cares. I said God cares. I said God cares. I said God knows where you are. God knows what you're facing. It's not an accident that you have come to the Apostolic Torch Conference. It's not an accident I'm here tonight because God wants somebody to know God cares. Come on, let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify the name of the Lord. God cares. I'm about ready for the first picture. Just in a moment. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And you know what God's doing? God's calling some of you to the ministry in this conference. I said God's calling some of you to be missionaries. Not just foreign, but also North American missionaries. Hallelujah, because God cares. I said because God cares. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated. Let me tell you about Christopher. Hallelujah, show the picture. This is Christopher. Christopher is from Nigeria. Christopher was a young man that came to Bible school in Nigeria. Christopher didn't have any money. Christopher didn't have anything at all. He just had a desire, and God called him to preach the Word of God. You know what? I've come to tell you, if God calls you, he'll give you the capability to do what he's called you to do. Hallelujah. I have no pedigree, no family in the church. My mother was not in the church. And there were moments that I wondered, can I ever do anything? And I would look at men that had fathers that were well known. And I would say, there's no way I can do anything. But you know what? I've got news for you. God cares. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What he doesn't care about is your pedigree. What he doesn't care about is how much money you've got. What he doesn't care about is if you've got a wrong name. He cares about your heart. I said he cares about your heart. 
Oh my goodness, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost here tonight. Come on, Epistolic Torch Conference. This isn't just another conference. This is a night for you to decide, I'm going to do what God has called me to do. I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Would you look at these two eyes for the grace and the mercy of God? I come from a coal miner's house. My dad could not read or write. My mother only went to the third grade. We had nothing at all. My mother never flew in an airplane, would never let me take her out to a steakhouse. The only place she'd let me take her out, even after I was general, uh, I was regional director when she died. But she would only let me take her to Long John Silver's. And I could have taken her to Ruth Chris's. But she wouldn't allow me. She said it was a waste of money. That's where I came from. But tonight, I'm not glad I've been to Ruth Chris's. Did you hear what I said? I'm not really glad about that. You know what I'm glad about? About 10 days ago, I preached in El Salvador, and I was able to go back to the church. I pastored for 20 years. And you know what? I preached a message. God... Somebody says God has forgotten. And in that service, two people were baptized in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm glad about. And with these two eyes, I have seen over one half million people filled with the Holy Ghost. And you want me to come here tonight and act like a big highfalutin executive from headquarters? You know what I am? I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. And I've come to tell you, God cares. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I said God cares. I said God cares. Don't you sit there and cry in your tears. Hallelujah. But you raise your hands and begin to rejoice in God. I see great things. I see churches started. I see revival in South Dakota. Hallelujah. 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 I feel a spell coming on. Y'all have spells around here? Hallelujah. I feel a Pentecostal shout coming on. I said, I feel a time to rejoice because God cares. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise your hands and worship God. Raise your hands and worship God. I love you, Jesus. 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 Daniel, Daniel, Dios tiene interés en usted, varón. Hallelujah. Él te ama a ti. Hallelujah. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. Es Daniel, ¿verdad? Que el Señor le bendiga. Dios te ama, hermano. Él quiere tocarle. Él sabe dónde está. Y Él quiere tocarle. Alabaria Santa la Bahía. Aleluya. 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 I'm preaching to somebody right now, and the enemy has told you you can't win. But I take that lying devil by the throat right now, and I tell you, the devil is a liar. There is victory for you. You can make it. God loves you. God cares. I said, God cares. I said, God cares. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Let me tell you about Christopher. Christopher was enrolled in Bible school in Nigeria. He graduated as valedictorian of his class. God directed him to start a church. Christopher, young, inexperienced, and penniless. Did you hear what I said? Penniless. He went and started a church. He didn't have a building. But there was, God led him to start a church under a massive umbrella tree in Africa, in Nigeria. The tree was remarkably functional for this purpose. Its branches protected the people from the scorching tropical sun, and the root system provided chairs for them to sit on. Hallelujah. Does God care? Christopher probably thought, I don't have a building. Missionary hasn't given me money, and here I am under a tree. But you know what he did? He preached the Word of God. 
I said he preached the word of God. I don't know where God's going to send you. If it's under a tree, do it with all of your heart and God will bless you. You don't need a building to save souls. I said you don't need a tabernacle to save souls. All you need is a hungry heart and the word of God. Come on, youth of the upper Midwest. It's time for us to take this part of the world for the name of Jesus. Too long they've called it the frozen north. Oh, no, it's not. It's the torch north. Hallelujah. We're going to torch it in the name of Jesus. Brother Lichtel, this is our day in the name of Jesus. I said, this is our day in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's go into Minneapolis and St. Paul. Let's go into the other areas of Minnesota and start churches. Because you know why? God cares. I said, God cares. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord. Would you let God open your vision tonight? Let God show you what he can do through you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. In one of Christopher's services, you may be seated. Tongues and interpretation went forth. God promised that the people would come from far and wide to worship with them under the tree. Today, I want you to know people who have come from three continents to worship God under the umbrella tree in Nigeria. I didn't say St. Paul, Minneapolis. I said a little town in the middle of Nigeria because when God calls you, he cares. I said he cares. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God warned them also that they would face suffering, hardship, and much opposition, but God would fight their battles. Christopher ministered to the flock on the weekends and attended Bible school during the week. When he first brought the message of Jesus' name, baptism, there was opposition. But Brother Brown, not long after that, he just kept on preaching, and he baptized 45 people in the name of Jesus. Does God care? I said, does God care? Yes. Oh, yes, God cares. Hallelujah. Not long after that, they were on their way to church one night. Sister Esther, his wife, in the night before, God had spoken to her. But that night on their way to church, a man jumped out of the bushes with a gun, and he pointed at her. She was walking ahead of Christopher. She he took the gun and pointed it at her and threatened her. You know what she did? God had warned her, and she said, in Jesus' name, and she pointed her finger at him. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And you know what happened when she pointed her finger at him? He began to tremble. The gun fell out of his hand. Christopher walked up. He ran off. I said the gunman ran off. And they went on to church. Does God care? I said, does God care? Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. A million times, yes, God cares. Hallelujah. I want you to know. Hallelujah. On another occasion, on another occasion, the next picture, on another occasion, the people, there they are, under the massive umbrella tree, worshiping God. On another occasion, they set snakes loose in the house. And one night, Esther woke up. And you know what? She f saw the snake on the bed. And when she saw the snake on the bed, she rebuked the snake, and it slithered away. There was another snake in the house. She rebuked it again. The third snake, which was a very venomous viper, bit Christopher, and he should have died immediately. I said he should have. I said he should have. Hallelujah. You know what, Brother Brown? How the enemy would like to say he should have started a church there. He should have done this. The devil would like to tell some of you young ladies, well, she should have served God. But I want you to know God is with you and God cares. Because Christopher, did you hear me? It didn't affect Christopher at all. He raised his hands and began to worship God. And you know what? God miraculously healed him. 
The next thing they did to the people under the massive umbrella tree, before the people got there for service one day, they took a, a beehive. They put it up in the tree, and they put a rope on it. And when the people came to worship, they began to sing and worship, and they lowered the beehive, and they thought, now we'll get them. The bees began to swarm, and then one by one, they dropped dead, and not one person was stumped. Does God care? I said, does God care? Does God care about where you are? Does God know who you are? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to know, I thank God that God touched and anointed them. They didn't have money. He could have gotten an attitude, but he just kept on preaching the word of God, and he just kept on telling the folks, come on, let's give. God will bless us. And you know what happened? I'm glad to tell you what happened. God blessed them, and they were able to dig a well in that village. Now the whole village comes to get water from the well of the United Pentecostal Church. And you know what else? They built a church. I said they built a church, and there it is. Hallelujah, the church that they built. Does God care? I said, does God care? That church now will seat 300 people. That village has a united Pentecostal church, and now Christopher is starting a church in the capital city of Nigeria. And you want me to sit down tonight and act like a bump on a log? You want me to come here tonight and preach a little sermonette? You've got something else to think about. Because I've come to tell you, God cares. I said God cares. Son, God cares. Hallelujah. It's time for somebody tonight to say, God cares and watch me worship him. God cares and watch me magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How long have I been preaching? Hallelujah. Do you know? Anybody know how long I've been preaching? Hallelujah. I'm having fun. Praise God. I said, I'm having fun. I've come to tell somebody God cares about you. I said, God cares about you. And God cares about Minnesota. I said, God cares about Wisconsin. I said, God cares about Kansas and North and South Dakota. God cares about Missouri and Illinois and Florida. God cares about China and Russia and Japan. I said, God cares about the world. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this world. I pray, God, for the Middle East right now. I pray for India. I pray for the Middle East, God, in the name of Jesus. Would you raise your hands and extend it to this world? And would you pray for this world? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Nigel. God cares about Fiji and the islands of the Pacific. I said, God. God cares. God cares. Hallelujah. 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 I said, God cares. I said, God cares. Let's raise our hands and worship him right now. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I magnify your name. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
put the picture of Satish up there. I'm not going to tell the whole story. You may be seated. Satish was a young man who was Hindu and was converted into Christianity. He was a Trinitarian, and he did not. He, began, he attended a very large Trinitarian church in uh, Delhi, and uh, he went to that Trinitarian church. I need the picture of Satish if you've got it. And uh, Satish was a young man that, that said, you know what? I, I don't understand the Trinity. Pastor, would you explain to me about the Trinity? And his Trinitarian pastor said, I'm sorry, Satish. After several times, it's a mystery, and you've just got it. You remember that testimony. You know him. You taught him. How, my goodness, I didn't know that. Hallelujah. He taught him. I didn't remember that. And you know what? They couldn't explain the Trinity to him. So he went to a park and he put his Bible on the bench and he said, I'm leaving my Bible here. If nobody can tell me who God is, I'll go back to Hinduism. But you know what? I'm glad to tell you, somebody walked by that park and they told him God cared. I said they told him. He went to Sism Christian Institute. Brother Griffith taught him. He graduated. Show the picture. There he is. He graduated. Next picture. He graduated from Bible college. Come on, ABI. I said, come on, ABI. It's not just about a cap and gown. It's about telling somebody about Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on. I've come to Epistolic Torch Conference to tell you the world is waiting. I said the world is waiting. Hallelujah. What are we going to do? I said, what are we going to do? Just come to church and shout about it? Or are we going to go to South Dakota and start a church? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Brown, thank you. I went to preach for him. Didn't know they were having a youth conference. I got in there a day early, but it was ordered of God. I got to preach to, to students in South Dakota. <laughs> Folks, I'm 61. I'm not supposed to be doing this. Hallelujah. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure not going to get in a, a rocking chair. Hallelujah. And I'm sure not going to sit around and do nothing. Because you know what? God cares. I said God cares. So you know what Satish did? Nobody told him about the oneness. But he said, I'm going to tell him. I just got an email from him this week. And more pictures. There's the picture. Show the next one. He started baptizing. He baptized eight Trinitarian ministers in the name of Jesus. Next picture. Then he baptized 22 in the name of Jesus. Next picture. Then he baptized 58 in the name of Jesus. Then he baptized 129 in the name of Jesus. Then he baptized 280 in the next picture, in the name of Jesus. Next picture. Go ahead and scroll through them. At the present time, he has baptized over 800 Trinitarian ministers in the name of Jesus. And there they are going to be baptized. Does God care? I said, does God care? Brother Poe, God cares. I said, God cares, brother and sister Poe. And I thank God for what God is doing. I said, I thank God for what God is doing. Hallelujah, Brother Griffith. I honor you, sir. I said, I honor you, sir. I honor you for what you have done. God cares, and thank you for teaching. I said, God cares. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll just about, in just a moment, I'll be ready for the pictures. Get them ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm just about ready, not yet. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The storm was raging. They were in the boat. 
They wondered if Jesus cared. But I want you to know he woke up. I said he woke up and said, peace be still and calm the storm. I'm preaching to somebody here right now. I don't know what storm you're facing, but please let me minister to you, and I'm just about finished. There's somebody here right now, and it may just be one person, and you're going through the storm of your life, but God sent me here tonight to tell you God cares about you. I said God knows where you are, and he cares about where you are. Hallelujah. Don't throw in the towel. I said don't give up, young lady. Don't give up, young man. Keep on worshiping God. Hallelujah. I said keep on worshiping God. Sir and ma'am, you may be a lady or a man, an older person that's here. God cares about you. God knows who you are. I prayed 34 years for my mother. I was preaching on deputation one night, and I'll never forget that night as I preached on David and Bathsheba. My 67-year-old gray-haired mama was in church, gray hair like mine. And I want you to know that night I preached, and I said, come to the altar. Mom began to cry, and I'd never seen her cry. She said, Bruce, God cannot forgive me for everything I've done because come to find out my maternal grandmother was baptized in Jesus' name in the 1920s. God cares. But that night, I baptized my 67-year-old mother in the name of Jesus. I said, I bet God cares. I said, God cares. She died of lung cancer because she smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. But three months before she died, God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Mom, don't give up. Dad, don't give up. Young person, don't give up. I said, don't give up. It's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. Yes, there were moments that I failed God as a young person, but I would go back to the front row and I would repent. The enemy would tell me, there's no need in you raising your hands. You've messed up, but you know what I did? I said, I'm raising my hands anyway. I'm going to worship God because God cares. Would you reach over and pray for somebody right now? You don't know what they're facing. And just stay with me a minute. Just stay with me. I'm not making the altar call yet. But just pray for somebody. Would you pray for somebody? Daniel, Dios tiene interés en usted, joven. Yo no quiero causarle sentir mal, pero el Señor te ama, joven. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray right now. Would you pray for somebody and ask God to touch them? You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what the situation is, but I do not come to condemn you. I come to tell you God cares. I said God cares in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I'm about ready. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 God. Come on, that's it. Let the Holy Ghost lead you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Would you listen to me right now? Can I be transparent with you? Can I be very transparent with you? Today, I took some days off with my wife, went to El Salvador. We dedicated our Bible school, the national offices. I went there and rested, and I really did rest for Brother Lichtel today. I paid for it, and I've still got to pay for it tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you the problems I've dealt with, but I've dealt with some pretty good ones today. And I'm not going to say what, but on moments like today, I have to be honest, I got back to the hotel. Brother Brown, you saw me out in the parking lot dealing with one problem. I was out in the parking lot, and you said, are you still out? Yeah, I was dealing with the problem. It's part of my job. It's part of my ministry. Sorry, not a job. But there are moments I get tired. There are moments I'm 61, and my schedule, and forgive me today, I got convicted, Brother Reese. I got convicted. You asked me about how I control my schedule, and I began talking about everything I do. You know, that's what workaholics do. And then I got in my room today, and I began to feel convicted because I felt like that maybe you thought I was bragging about all that stuff I'm doing. You know, all that's just busy work without the Holy Ghost. And I really was convicted about it because my schedule did get out of control, and I try to control it. And honestly, can I be real open with you? The last year and a half, I've been, received two calls from very large churches. 
that asked me if I wanted to pastor. The first one, God forgive me, I considered it for an hour. I hung up and said I'd pray about it. Called back an hour later and repented. I said, I'm so sorry because there's no way I could do that. And then and recently, our home church, and if you know where I'm from, that's fine if you don't. But it looked like that was going to be a possibility. And people began to talk about finances and everything would be great. And in my mind, I wouldn't even pray about it, Brother Lichtel. And God convicted me. Because you know what God showed me in that? It's not God's will for me to do it. But God showed me that at 61, I still have to pray, God, I'll do whatever you would have me do. Brother Poe, I had to pray, God... I'll do whatever you want. And I wasn't even willing to pray. I wasn't even willing. And God worked me over on that one. Because you know what? I still have to say, God, whatever you want me to do. But you know what's burning in my heart tonight? You know what's really burning in my heart tonight? Hallelujah. No, I'm not taking any churches. I may lose the election this year. It's term limits. And if I do fine, I'll step out. And I'll be a good loser by the help of God. Hallelujah. If that happens. But I want you to know there's one thing that burns in my heart tonight. God cares about this world. I said God cares about this world. And He cares about the people in the world that need to know Him. He cares about you. But this is the crux of my message tonight. God cares. I said God cares. But my question is not, does God care? My question is, do you care? Please listen to me. Do you care? Do I care enough to say no to a salary that would set me up for the rest of my life? But do I care more about souls? I don't come for you to praise me tonight, but I do say, yes, I do care. I said, yes, I do care. I said, yes, I do care. But my question is, do you care? Do you care enough? Yeah, let's worship and praise God. But that's not what I'm asking for right now. Young people, I ask you, do you care enough to make your way to this altar in a moment and say, God, I'll do whatever you call me to do. If it's to go start a church in South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, if it's to go to Canada and start a church, I'll do it. If it's to go to another land, I'll do it. And tonight, please don't come to the altar unless you really mean what you're saying. But I'm opening this altar right now for someone, and I ask you the question, do you care? Do you care about the people whose faces are on the screen? Because you see, in the next minute, 72 people will die that have never heard the name of Jesus in the world. Did you hear what I said? 72 people will die in the next 60 seconds that have never heard the name of Jesus. God cares. But you see, the only way He can really care is through our hands and through our actions. Do you really care? God, I love you, Jesus. God, I give myself to you right now. Would you find a place of prayer? The altar's full. There's some more room in the altar. Just make your way up. Step on up. There's some room over here and over here. If there's not room there, just kneel wherever you are and let's make a commitment to God right now. God, I'm willing to do what you would call me to do. I'm willing to go wherever you would have me go, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I give myself to you right now in the name of Jesus. I know I've been offered a scholarship to go to university, but God, if it's your will, I'll come to Bible college, Lord. If that's what you're calling me to do, God, if you're calling me to the ministry, I give myself to you right now. I'm willing to do what you would have me do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 
faces of people that do not know him, faces of people that have never heard the name of Jesus. God, help us. We know you care, but do we really care, God? Do we really care about those that need to know you? Do we really care about Zimbabwe? Do we really care about Japan? Do we really care about Russia and about Latvia and about Azerbaijan and about North Korea? Do we really care about Afghanistan, God? Do we really care about Eritrea? Do we care about the Cook Islands? Do we care about Mali? Do we care about Costa Rica? Do we care about Mexico and Argentina and Paraguay? Do we care about the United Kingdom and Ireland and Scotland? Do we care, God? Do we care about our city where we live in the name of Jesus. Lord, I agree, my God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Passion. 